Good, good morning, UNISA community. That includes my colleagues, my pan panel members, and then our special guest today, which is our UNISA first year students. Welcome to this uh, broadcast. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Dozo Zulu from the Student Retention Unit. I'm a student success practitioner. The Student Retention Unit uh, focuses on the First Day Experience Program. What that means is that uh, we provide uh, different resources to first year students um, that will help you in your academic walk, in your student walk. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, those resources are, uh, are meant to assist you to pass your first year. So the purpose of this broadcast is to motivate you and inspire you. And how are we doing that? We have uh, our esteemed guests, our panel members, who are our fellow UNISA students uh, at different levels, uh, at higher levels from second year upwards, who are going to be sharing their experiences uh, today. I'm going to just give you the names quickly just after I've, I've done the house rules. So the, before I introduce my guests, the house rules, I'm just going to share them quickly now for today so that you see how we're going to conduct this live broadcast. Uh, let me just quickly share my screen. Uh, just give me a thumbs up so that you can see. Okay. Yes. So our uh, house rules, please be aware that your microphone is off. The camera is also off. And I just kindly ask you uh, to be respectful in your in your comments that you're going to post in the chat. And then um, uh, please no sharing of personal information. And then if you can't see the video or see us or the presentation, may I kindly ask you to rejoin in the same link. Um, you might have network problems where you are or whatever, just try to rejoin and then just be aware that there's a question and answer session at the end of the discussion. Also, the re please don't panic, the recording will be distributed after the event and uh, kindly note that there is a survey um, um, that we will post in the chat. May I kindly uh, ask you to please participate in the survey and then also after the the discussion, you can also just go back and also respond to the survey. Okay, I'm just going to unshare and then continue with our discussion. All right, to introduce my guest, um, today we have uh, who is going to be sharing me, sharing with me uh, the discussion for today is uh, Miss Kenesha Pereira. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. I actually did uh, try <laughs> numerous times, so I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And then also Mr. Emmanuel Adediran. And then lastly, we have Zindi Shabalala. Can you just turn on your camera so that our fellow um, students can see you? And then we can also start the discussion. Um, uh, can I just kindly ask you to introduce yourselves so that we continue with the discussion? Please turn your camera on. Yes. Yeah. Hey, hi. Hello. Hello. Hello, colleagues. <laughs> okay. Where are the other colleagues? Um, they are right I'm, here with me. Okay, you can, you can. <laughs> okay, then you can start and introduce yourself. Um, okay. You can start, Kanisha. Okay. So, just okay. briefly, to uh, introduce yourself to our students. Yeah. Okay, no problem. Hi, everyone. I'm Kanisha Pereira, a current student at UNISA, currently doing my honours in business management, specialising in advanced operations management and supply chain management. Um, oh, wow. Where do I start? <laughs> okay, um, maybe as we go along, you can unpack uh, uh, what about yourself, uh, but maybe now your name and where you come from, I think it's, it's going to be okay. enough. Okay, yeah. So I'm actually in Pretoria, born and raised, okay. right? <laughs> so he is. Yes. Yeah. You look cool. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kenisha. All right. We could go to uh, Mr. Emmanuel. Hi, 
Yes, he's Okay, thanks. Hi, Emmanuel. Oh, Hi, I see Emmanuel. everyone got the theme. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> It wasn't planned, everyone. It wasn't planned. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. Hi, Emmanuel. Welcome. Thank Please you introduce yourself and then tell us where you come from. Okay. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Adelio, and I come from Nigeria nationally. Okay. I'm a nationality of Nigeria, and I currently reside in Pretoria, South Africa. Oh, okay. You're also local, Pretoria. <laughs> Welcome. And then you can much. move on to Zinzi. Okay. We're using one computer, so yes. yeah. No. <laughs> Please don't for be now. distracted for now. For now, yes. Don't We're be still distracted. Trying to fix it. Yeah, I know it's fine. Yes, my I name is Cindy Chavalala, and I also reside here in Pretoria. Oh, okay. We're all local because I'm also in Pretoria. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you so yes. much. I think maybe to kickstart the discussion, since you're sitting there, I'm gonna. I was gonna actually ask you a question last, but for you, Zinzi maybe share with our students um why did you choose to study at unisa we're um, actually discussing it the oh, three of us so that we yeah. can yeah but the reason i chose to study in unisa firstly it was because it was convenient especially when it comes to finances mm, um okay. it, yeah it, it doesn't rip off your pocket you know and okay. you can take um, the number of modules that you feel comfortable with at that certain year. And okay. I also love that they don't put pressure on you. It's not as rigid as other universities whereby their curriculum is, is yeah, it's straight to the point. But with UNISA, for the undergrad um, qualification, they give you eight years to finish your qualification. So if you feel like, okay, maybe for this year, if you are working, you want to take maybe five modules Pay, yeah, they allow you to do that. You know, they're not strict as 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 how many modules they're supposed to take. So okay. I found it convenient for me that okay, no, I can study at my own comfort and I can take as many modules or less modules as I feel comfortable with. So yes. Okay, so for you it was more of uh, convenience. Yes. Oh, okay. Maybe share with our students what are you studying and what year are you doing. I'm currently doing my honors, majoring okay. psychological counseling, and okay. it's my final year. Oh, great. Wow, yes. well done. Thank you <laughs> very then, much. <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. And then I think I'm going to move on to um, Imano. Um, you can also maybe share with us, why did you choose UNISA? <laughs> okay, nice to meet you again. So, yes, maybe uh, before you even share why UNISA, uh, you can also share with our students uh, what are you yeah. studying. Oh yeah, um, I'm currently finalizing my BA in psychology. Okay. Also, I put in to be a candidate for the PGCE program, seeing that um, transitioning to becoming an educational psychologist. Oh, so okay, great. you know, I would need uh, a background of a BED. So the PGC helps to bridge that. And yeah, I'm going forward and then I have to do the honors and then masters and then hopefully the PhD. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> that's good. So yeah, that's that's the goal and the vision. Uh, okay. So what I'm picking up is that um as a student, even if you're doing your first year, you have yes. to know your um your I don't want to say career trajectory, but what modules to take in order to Absolutely. get you where you want to go, right? Is that what yes. you're saying? Okay, yes, great. That's correct. Yes, I think that's an important point to raise. Um, so why did you choose to study at UNISA? Well, it's quite interesting. Um, because transitioning and uh, looking back from where um I started from, I you know initially started um I was doing nursing in a different country in the Gambia, and it was like an American system. So there, most of our questions were. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, the form of delivery was uh, objectives. It was very tricky objectives. Mm -hmm. And then coming here, it, it was a system I was kind of familiar with. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the British system. Initially, you know, the, those times, I think in 2021, our work was majorly theoretical. So mm -hmm. here you are doing a lot of theory work and... Um, so part of the reasons why I decided Unisa was going to work for me was because I could 
balance work at the same time and study. And it was cool. And getting on board of UNISA, it's quite easy compared to other universities. And most especially as a foreign student myself, mm. you know, um, the support process wasn't really what's it called overboarding or overwhelming. And I had options for exemptions. So it was quite easy for me as a foreign student. So I opted in for UNISA. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that is great. I think what you are telling us, um, the experience of a foreign student, uh, it, it's actually um, very important because we have a lot of foreign students at, at first true. years. Yeah, so yeah. I think w I'm not saying we're patting ourselves at the back as you need to, yeah. but um, I think it's nice to know that adapting in our community and um, as a foreign student, it was actually not difficult for you. So I yes. think I, I think that it, that aligns with uh, 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 the the mission of UNISA, which which indirectly is what you're speaking to. I think that's very important. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. And lastly, I'm gonna go to Kanisha. I just saw her popping in. Maybe Kanisha, you can tell us why did you choose UNISA? Please turn on your camera. Okay. Oh yeah. Yay. Hi. <laughs> yes. Okay, oh, okay, great. So, so for you, since you are a local, <laughs> there's an echo. I'm not sure why. Are you guys in the same room? Yes. Maybe that's why that that could be the problem. Um maybe uh Emmanuel, you can turn off your mic so long while we speak to Kanisha, and then when it's your turn, we'll switch on your mic and your camera. Yeah, okay, Kanisha, you can go. Oh, was it for you? Was it just just climbing the 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 stair, the, the steps <laughs> to UNISA? Because it's so close, not, since you're local. Not, not necessarily, hey. Okay. Because my choice was actually a well concerned decision, which was driven by several factors, which included Okay, just hold on. Just hold on. There's an echo. Um, oh, is it fine now? Okay, you can go. So what happened was I actually was diagnosed with epilepsy and depression the okay. first year that I started. And then it was just challenging. Like, <laughs> it was mm. difficult to manage your social life and you know, get back into the world. So my doctor was the one that actually initially recommended minimizing my exposure to large groups so that okay. it doesn't, ex you know, expose my anxiety or or um, trigger it in any sort of way or epileptic, um, epileptic episodes. So the medical advice weighed heavily on my choice for okay. the institution um, because the online platform offered a practical solution which accommodated my health needs. It also allowed me to pursue my academic goals while minimizing the risks as well associated with my health concerns. The flexibility also gave me the freedom to adapt my studies and also give me those specific requirements that I needed yeah. to actually be safe and also manage my learning experience. Also, it's, it's, it's accessible and adaptable. And now that we're transitioning out of the online platform and actually more face-to-face, -face, now we get to actually meet our peers yeah. and stuff <laughs> as I slowly transition out of epilepsy because I was, I think about two years in my studies, I had a full body analysis and I was told I don't have it anymore. So oh, it was actually wow. an additional benefit. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's so but nice. It, it was awesome. So and now we actually get to meet each other. We're more involved. Yes. So you have, I, I basically got both sides, my bread, but yes. both sides. <laughs> yes. well, that is actually eye-opening because it, there might be another student who's here in the live broadcast or maybe to watch in future. Actually, I was going to ask you, what was your major challenge? But then I think you've unpacked it already. Um, when you are studying at UNISA, it, it's it's not it's not a common sort of like um, experience. So maybe then you could share how how maybe another student can say, okay, there's Kanisha. Actually, her reason is is not uh, what do you say. Um, 
um, is not so much like maybe other people. Maybe you could share with us what made you to continue to say, okay, as much as I have this challenge, how do I actually overcome uh, so that I successfully, uh, you know, pass my first year? And more than anything, it's it's for yourself. And then also show other people that it's actually doable. So what would you maybe say to a first year student who's thinking I have this major challenge? Um, how do I actually move on or how do I make sure that I pass my first year student, whatever challenge I encounter? Maybe you can share with us. Okay. So my first year at UNISA, yo, <laughs> it was a roller coaster and a half. It was fun, it was difficult, it was challenging. But you know, when you grow, grow up in a city, basically, you're not really, you, you, you're you used to those, you know, the people around you. Yeah. Now you had to like, I had to limit myself also because I started during the COVID-19 oh, pandemic. Yes. Which just changed the whole academic like, <laughs> Experience yeah. because the institution itself as a whole was transitioning to yes. only online. So the restrictions imposed during the um, pandemic meant no physical contact, mm. and it actually made it infinitely more complicated. Yeah. <laughs> I vividly remember the frustrations of trying to register and applications, and then if you have a problem with like your service or your network or you have a problem with your software you couldn't like come in and say okay fine i'm gonna go get help there because there's no one here. Yeah, <laughs> so it, yeah. it was basically online and we all oh, the endless glitches and navigating through this virtual experience it was just yes. it was difficult the transition i must say was difficult because you just step out of high school and now you're suddenly online and now you can't speak to anyone you can't ask for help you don't know which platforms to use it was just Terrible because I remember I distinctly remember my first year was the super semester. Oh yes, <laughs> and it was it was literally a super sized headache, just like that semester. <laughs> it wasn't. I I don't think it was like the, the best decision for me as especially since it was my first year trying to take tackle it in a very short span of time, but it was difficult. All I did was I. I tried my utmost best to like basically work a schedule. Like, you know how you get a timetable in school? I mm. would literally sit and try to create my own timetable yeah. just to ensure that I get everything done. And even the physical books, you don't have physical books anymore. So now you're physically with, you know, PDFs and everything is online. And so it was also a whole new thing to actually have my books on a laptop instead of physically with me and my exams, you know? The, the um, discipline, I must say, was also a hurdle that one had to overcome mm. to, you know, adapt and actually overcome these challenges. So, yeah, it was a heavy weight. But despite all the craziness I pushed through, I mean, I had to. I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> but I was determined to make it work, to adapt to the new way of learning. It was a trial by fire, fire but it taught me resilience. Yeah. the importance of adaptability, and most importantly, that I could overcome seemingly insurmountable yeah. challenges. So, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think um, you raised a very important um, element, actually. Um, um, so what I'm picking up from what you're saying, that you were able to actually um, do time management. So that is yeah. critical. That is critical for your first year. Uh, and then also you raised um, how, what uh, soft, what I think you spoke about the different software or how to actually yes. navigate online. Yes. And then you also spoke about online exams, uh, which which uh, our students needs to actually know how to navigate. So I think um, students, you must be aware that you need actually to um conduct a lot of time management because it has to come from you. You as a student have to allocate time for your studies. Please, and then, please, please. yeah, and then also 
you spoke about what we call digital literacy. You have to know how to use your computer, you have to know how to use my UNISA, you have to know how to navigate, download your study material, you have to know how to, because, you know, and I just want to uh, highlight that all these resources are available to you, first year students, uh, the student retention units, and uh, also our colleagues at DCCD. Um, we, uh, we are also um, providing all this assistance for first year students. So just be uh, aware that we provide all these uh, resources. And then you also spoke about online exams and it was a super semester. Maybe it's just to highlight what is a super semester because um, a super semester is basically um, uh, all your exams are in, uh, um, what do you call October, November. So it's like a year um, and it can be overwhelming. But I think Kanisha raised the important point to say that um, time management is very important. You have to find time for your studies. And were you working at that time? No, not at all. Okay, so, <laughs> so <laughs> that, there's a lot uh, to think about if you're a first year student and you are working as well. Uh, it, does that mean if you are, studying and full-time, even if you can work and you can still study full-time, does that mean you won't have these challenges? No, it simply means that if you're working, your time management has to actually sort of exceed someone who's, who has, uh, who's studying, uh, you know, who doesn't, who doesn't work. But does that mean you don't have chores or environment actually allows you, you have to actually create the environment yourself to focus on your studies. And then there's an issue of online exams uh, that one uh, that Kanisha uh, actually um, spoke about. And then you also spoke about uh, discipline. Uh, as you have to be disciplined, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then uh, I think uh, since I asked you what, how were you able to over, to overcome, you spoke about you had to be resilient and actually see yourself in that environment and say, I can overcome. Thank you so much, Kanisha. I think um, you've actually raised important elements. And maybe just the last question. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to you because we spoke about how you were able to overcome. I can move on to Zinzi. Zinzi, we haven't forgotten you. Please come on to the stage. <laughs> and maybe you share also, how were you able to um, plan your studies um, in your first year to make sure that you pass your first year? Lucky for me, uh, I started 2019. Oh, okay. So... Yeah, I had the both experience of the COVID and before the COVID. Oh, so before the yes. COVID, my, my first year experience with it was most of the people that I knew were already studying with UNISA. So mm -hmm. they helped me how to navigate the, the website, especially on how to to search for my my tutorials, how to download the the books and how to also see the due dates and the examinations and so forth. So it wasn't that much of a, of a struggle because I already knew that, okay, no, there's someone who's already part of UNISA who's going to help me how to use their website. And the, 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 the seeing students coming to campus because we'd normally come to campus and study, but when we transition to the COVID, now we're no longer coming yeah. to campus to study or to do our assignments. It was a bit of a challenge, but not that much because I'm more of, 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 of like liking my own space. So yeah. I felt comfortable being at home and studying at home, you know. So, yeah, that's my first year challenge. Oh, OK. And then um, so how did you plan your studies then? How were you able to Sorry. plan your studies? whilst um, you were able to to navigate yourself. I don't see it. You see it there? Yeah. And then so it's website. Sorry, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you please repeat, sorry? Oh, okay. Maybe you can share with our uh, first year students so for me, what I'm picking up is that it's important to um, connect with other students. And yes. I think maybe in 2023, that could be a little bit easier because, you know, we don't have restrictions. So yes. maybe, uh, so yeah, so I think you were saying that it's, it's 
you were connecting with other students to learn the system, how you navigate the system. Yes. And then also you're advising that um, our fellow students also familiarize themselves uh, with, with the system so that they're able to navigate themselves yes. uh, and make their uh, student work much, much easier, right? Yes. So with having those skills, how are you able to plan and say, you're saying, okay, yes, I love my space and I don't mind being at home. <laughs> so how did you plan with your environment? And, you know, maybe you had to do chores, you had to do, you know. So how did you plan and say, okay, so I, this year I'm focusing, uh, this is how I'm going to focus and make sure that I'm passing my first year. How did you plan? Well, at, at, in my first year, I was currently unemployed. Oh, so, okay. Sorry. Continue. So it was easier for me to study normally during the day. Oh, for me, I advised okay. it to study normally during the day. And because even though I was not that fresh from high school, but I still had that knowledge of, okay, you're attending school the entire day. So mm. I would plan my studies, maybe, for example, do two modules during the day, and then I'll spend evening resting. Because as much as you want to do well in your studies, you have to rest. Exhaustion yeah. is, is, is something that deters someone from their studies and also their social life, you know. So I didn't want to have exhaustion, whether mentally, physically mm. or emotionally. So because I was unemployed at that time, during the day, my focus on, was on my schoolwork, you know, and then during the night I sleep that cross-nighting thing, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It yeah. doesn't work for everyone, it right? It doesn't work for anyone, yes. Uh, I think I think you raise important things that, you know, you get exhausted as a student. Books can be exhausting. Yes. You need to yes. find time to rest. Yes. Yeah, I think that's very important. And I think um, maybe, thank you so much, Zinzi. I think as, I'm just going to speak to Emmanuel now. I'm just going to uh, ask him two questions. And then okay. I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap up so that we give time for our presentation. Okay. Um, Emmanuel, maybe come through. Hello again. Hello again. Yes. Sorry, colleagues, we are in the same room. My panel is in the same room, so it's giving the echo. Please do not. Uh, Please be patient with us. Thank you. I'll this one. I'm just going to um, admit. Yeah. So are you yeah. able to hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Awesome. I think you actually shared already why did you choose UNISA. Maybe you can yes. describe your experience on um, adapting to online and how were you able to study online. And lastly, how did you cope with online exams? Okay, um, so adapting to online, it was quite interesting. I mean, transitioning from um, a university where, you know, it was on-site, uh, all of it was you do your work in school and, and all that. So moving from, and, and I also had prior experience with UNISA before COVID. Mm -hmm. So that that entire experience to say, how then do I cope with the online studies was quite interesting. Yeah. You know, I needed to take into consideration <clears throat> access to devices, access to data, and mm. um, be able to navigate the online system. And because I, I you know, I was quite familiar, I'm quite familiar with digital literacy. It wasn't quite a hurdle. I also had some form of experience with the IELTS exams, you know, so it gave me power background to navigate the online system in terms of writing exams. But um, I, I think the few challenges that I would have experienced that I had experienced at some point was, oh, there was a particular time where I had um, written exams and the uh, the Invigilator app. Oh, yeah, yes. Was, yeah, it had glitches. So um, it was quite, <laughs> I think I had to write the exams two times actually. And and there was this other time where I had written an exam and I was so quite sure, like I used to share this with my, my colleagues. I was so sure about what I had written, but I don't know what happened 
to the marking system or whatever the case is, but I was marked a fail, right? And then I had to contact my lecturer to say, no, man, you can't give me a fail. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sure about what I did in these exams. And then, thankfully so, they had to um, redo it, do the, do, the, do the remark, and, you know, it was a distinction for me. So, oh, wow. um, you know, not many students have this experience and have yes. the fact that you can contact your lecturer to say, no, um, I don't support this mark I've been given. It's either you, you know, go back to it to confirm what's happening. Yeah. It's either on the side of the, the invigilator app. It's, you, you know, the, there could be a couple of reasons why yeah. many people, you know, that sort of experience and they do not know how to tackle such issues. So uh, I think from my side, those experiences are what could people could benefit from to say there's yes. certain steps to take. And, and um, so it's just, you know, take responsibility for yourself and have adequate access to information because part of the things, uh, some of the challenges I had experienced in my first year was the lack of access to relevant information. Because mm -hmm. in, in other universities in South Africa, you know, uh, foreign students are able to get some sort of scholarships to help them with the entire learning experience with the ease of payment and all that stuff. But I didn't have any idea as to how that works with UNISA. And I also didn't know about the AOD form, you know, that could help ease your payment and all that stuff. So at that point, I missed like two semesters because I couldn't afford to pay for it yeah. you know, at that time. So I didn't have access to this relevant information, so that it, it accumulated to the challenges I'd experienced my first year. And um, yeah, I think that covers, you know. Yeah, you actually raised very important uh, elements. You spoke about the, the devices that you need in order to make sure that, you know, your student work is actually um, I would say I would say more seamless and not um, so challenging. But then I just want to also highlight to our students is that we do have computer labs in different uh, uh, campuses in UNISA nationwide. So you know I don't I don't think you need to actually worry so much about that if you don't have a computer. And then we also have access to Wi-Fi on campus. So when you visit our campuses, there's uh, free Wi-Fi. You don't have to pay for it. Yes. And then just I'm just highlighting the some of the challenges that um, Emmanuel encountered. Uh, but we do provide that. L I think the issue that also he raised about not having access to information sometimes can be a challenge. And then uh, thinking that you do not, UNISA doesn't provide, but then, you know, when you have access to information, I think it's very, very critical that when we send emails or announcements so that you read uh, what UNISA provides. Um, I just was also stressed that before you even accept an offer, uh, the student retention unit uh, provides, uh, there is a MOOC that you take that helps you to navigate and how you're going to adapt to uh, to UNISA. So it's very important that you do that MOOC. But then obviously we're speaking to the converted because you're a first year uni uh, student at UNISA already. But I just wanna, I just wanna highlight um, that that MOOC helps you to navigate UNISA and gives you access to information. And then you also can also evaluate yourself how you can adapt to uh, distant education in an environment in the context of UNISA. I think also something uh, that students sometimes don't uh, take into consideration is what Emmanuel is talking about. It's digital literacy, digital literacy. It's very critical that you have digital literacy training training. So we also provide that as UNISA. And for you, I think that was an advantage for you, uh, Imran, yeah. right? Yeah, it was not a, a setback. And But it can be a challenge for a first-year student now. So please, please, please do take uh, the digital literacy trainings. It's going to help you to understand how you na navigate the system. And then you also spoke about the Invigilator app. I don't want to us to overwhelm our first-year students because they have some, some of our students 
are still doing their first semester and they don't know anything about the Invigilator app. I'm not going to talk much about that, but then just be aware that um, since it's online, we do have that process, which you're going to get training in. So be um, on the lookout for your for the for for the emails that you're going to get, uh, and then you attend those trainings and how you navigate when you actually write your online exams. I just want to say thank you so much, Emmanuel, for sharing your experience. Uh, it's 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 not uh, common, but then it's it's unique. But at the same time, that those challenges um, do happen. So be mindful, a bit mindful of that. I think the most important thing that you raised is that. Um, you know, you need to take accountability and responsibility of your studies. Um, that is very, very critical that you take responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I, I you, think yeah, you can yeah, go. I was just going to add that you, you then need to know how and what time you best function, you know, with your yes. studies. Because I, I'm the, the nocturnal type. I, I, at my initial year, I was working at the same time as a waiter, so it was quite overwhelming. Oh, yeah. My time for studying would be at night. Mm. And so even in my third state, I would, you know, put in the best I mm. can to be able to make use of the night times to study. So as a first year student, you need to know when exactly are you able to comfortably yeah. study at night during the day, are you able to study in a noisy area or it in is. a calm space, you know. Those sort of things you take into accountability and you're then able to make use of, yeah, because UNISA is quite easy, the exams are quite easy, but <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's it. Okay, thank you so much, Iman. Maybe the last parting, parting words, I think you've touched on this already. Um, yeah. So how would you suggest that our first year student actually make sure that they are successful in their studies maybe just one sentence or one suggestion um, okay uh, well i'll go by the analogy of saying um whoever's gone ahead can you know actually lead the way so get in touch with the sreu the student retention unit and our department here the um, directorate of counseling and you know the, the department you have student mentors that could show you the way and just give you tips, easy tips on how to navigate your way. It's quite easy. You say it's not a strenuous university that you need to go to school every day. <laughs> you, yeah. you know, it's and if you can't afford the registration fee initially, you can use the AOD form. You know, you don't need to pay a lump sum at the same time and all that stuff. So it's quite easy for the less privileged. It accommodates everybody actually. You know, it's one of the best institutions in in, in in Africa, because yeah. wherever you are, <laughs> you, you know, you know it's also Nigeria, it's in, um, uh, what's it called, Australia, across Everywhere. the globe. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. So it's one of the best institutions you can study with. Okay, thank you so much, Emmanuel. I think we're much. running out of time, but yeah. I, I, I'll give just one more parting comment to Zinzi and then I could also give it to Kanisha before we go to our presentation from our colleagues. Um, maybe Zinzi you can go first and then Kanisha. Yes, just one parting comment or you know advice to our first year student on how they can be successful. In their studies, yes. um, I, would, I would advise them to have study mates. It was really helpful for me because there will be questions or assignments that which you can't understand. But when you work as a team, it becomes easier. So that can okay, maybe, for example, one will tackle maybe question one, and then you'll be able to understand what is needed. And then the goal for 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 passing the assignment becomes easier because there's not much weight on your shoulders because you'll be sharing the, the task together. So advise them, have study mates and also do work also on yourself on your own so that you can yeah, be independent, but also like important, have study mates and yeah. 
Okay, yeah, I think. But then the important part, do not plagiarize. Yes. Because <laughs> you're going to fail. That's very important. <laughs> yeah. That's very important. Yes. Okay. If, if, if you're working together, you'll be holding each other accountable. So if one commits plagiarism, you have to tell them, like, no, what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, integrity. Integrity yes. in studies is very important. Yes. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank and you very last, much. Lastly, Kanisha, please go for it. We can't see you. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So one last uh, parting um, uh, suggestion on how, you know, our students can be successful or make sure that they pass their first year. <clears throat> oh, wow. <clears throat> well, like I said, it's difficult at first. So I would suggest find your ground. Find your ground. So go through your coursework, go through um, your different um, means. So, you know, with every module, there is e-tutors available. There yes. is lecturers that provide you with extra resources. There is, um, there is, um, um, yo, there's mentorship programs. There is, you can volunteer. You, there's a lot of things that you can make use of. So to you, it might seem like it's not beneficial to me. You know, I'm not part of that group. But yeah. if you actually actually actively engage with your um, course material, attend those virtual lessons, um, mm -hmm. participate in the online discussions, because my UNISA's page is so in a, like advanced that you can communicate with students in your module. So communicate with your students. If you're facing a difficulty, speak. And if you're not um on the right path or you feel like you need extra guidance con you know speak to your lecturer send your lecturer an email the whole thing about UNISA is communication I feel like communication is key yeah because we're not far from each other so create that bond where you know okay if I struggle with something someone is there to assist me and the major major thing you I can't stress enough is master your time management yes although we didn't work in our first year as time went by we started mentoring i started tutoring i started working so it was all these things in one but we got through that first stage where we found our ground we knew where we stood so that's why i said it's, it's essential that you take that time find yourself find where you need to be because like I said, for me, it was very difficult with health concerns, like with health mm. concerns. But I mean, I graduated with cum laude, so wow. <laughs> it's possible, it's possible. My yes. fellow colleague as well, Z, as well, we struggled, but we did it cum laude. <laughs> <laughs> so all I can say is really take everything, your study guides, your practice exams, your ad hoc, your training, do it. And don't, even if you have to repeat it three or four times, do it three or four yeah. times just to ensure that um, everything is, you know, planned out and everything is okay on your end. And another thing that I have to say is, please read due dates. Yeah. Read due dates because yes. it's very essential. I know that people think, yeah, it's my first assignment, the second one is there, but you need entrance to exams. And that's the only way you're going to get it is through your assessments. So put in the effort in, like from day one. Don't wait until last minute. Put your effort in from day one. Because like Emmanuel said, if you focus, it's easy. It's really it's easy. If you focus and you put in that work and that determination, it's very really easy. But if you don't, <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Kanish. I don't want to cut you off because we won't finish. I think one word I can just say is that oh, maybe two or three words is that you need to take charge in the accountability of your studies. We are, I mean, we are not saying it's easy, but we're saying it's doable. So we want every, every first year student to pass their studies no matter their challenges. Are we saying that your challenges maybe are inferior to other challenges? No, but we're simply saying that um, please join the co UNISA community with all these different resources that student retention is is, is, is providing as well as um, 
our fellow colleagues who are just going to come in just now and actually give a presentation on how actually you are, you'll be able to do all these things that we spoke about. So we're not saying that it's easy, but we're saying that it's doable because they're experts in their field. So I'm just, uh, thank you so much, Kenisha. I'm just going to in, uh, 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 invite Miss um, <clears throat> Lisa Dazel uh, at the background there who will be doing the uh, uh, who will be showing the presentation, but Mr. Vusi Penyane and um, Dr. Horisang uh, Chipiwa are going to be presenting. They are our senior counseling uh, counselors at UNISA. So may you please, uh, I, I see the presentation is up already. Dr. Kodisang, you can go. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. Um, Good afternoon to our guest today. Um, we are now going to share a bit about summiting Kilimanjaro as a metaphor of your journey with your studies and your career. The journey has already started long before you entered UNESA, but even the planning of this summit is part of the journey. So this is just to share with you so that you have got something to hold on in and contextualize your journey in your studies and your career. And this metaphor is very important because any person over the world, if you talk Kilimanjaro, they will tell you their desire to summit this mountain. It's a majestic mountain in Africa, which everybody want to summit. And, and think about that. Why are you summiting? What is the purpose of this summit? So as I said, this is the majestic mountain at the top of the summit is very rewarding. Um, one of our guests have shared the graduation uh, with cum laude. We could also look at that is maybe the top of the summit or it's just one level in the summit. But we are all looking to get to the top of the summit. I'm not sure what it means for you, that top of the summit, but we know it's very rewarding. But you must also remember the real experience, though, is when we are on different levels or what we call different camps. It's also important to understand that people summit for different reasons. You need to understand what are you summiting for? We know in South Africa every July there is a group that summit for the Mandela Foundation and every year they've got a specific reason. It could be for children's hospital, it could be for shoes, it could be for sanitary wear for girls, but there is a reason. So you also need to think about the reason why you are part of this summit at UNISA. But in the journey of your career, you also need to understand as you are submitting for different reasons, you need to hold into that one reason to help you to go through the summit. There are a number of things that affect the journey and we must acknowledge them. It's not only the technical things that we need to be aware of, there are also emotional and psychological things that impact on the journey what you carry with you, your previous experience and your previous preparation. I have been saying to people, the journey at university does not only start in your first year, but your experience of sub A or grade A and your struggles or your successes can affect now your first year at UNISA. Your team members, your support team, who is supporting you. Remember in summiting, even the person who is carrying your luggage is very important. The person who prepares your food is very important. But we also talk about weather conditions. We are now going to start with exams in October, November. ESCOM have just announced yesterday we are going back to stage six, which has got also impact on your exams and exam preparation. Also, how you think about the summit impacts on you. There are challenges as we summit. There are different challenges on the journey. As I said, the weather, some people struggled with cold weather or wind. There is also physical challenges, exhaustion. You did not start your journey now, but also starting your journey from the beginning of the year to now, it could impact on you. 
During the summit, some people may develop medical challenges such as frostbite, breathing problems, and you need to be aware that do I need someone to help me with that? You may also develop mental challenges because you feel overwhelmed. Somebody mentioned earlier, we don't want to overwhelm you, but already you might be feeling overwhelmed by the information of what you don't know. So who do you need to make sure you can manage this sense of being overwhelmed? I want to share with you the story of the summit. There was once a story of a group of people who were summiting Kilimanjaro, but in this group, there was a blind man. And as the group was summiting, they could see that their program or their progress is a bit delayed. And they thought of it's him who is delaying them because they had to assist him with a number of things. So at night, as he was resting in his camp, he overheard other members deciding they want to leave him behind. So he then informed them in the morning, let allow me to make a decision for myself. Don't make a decision for me. It's your first year at UNISA, it could be your first semester, but there could be a number of voices that you are hearing, maybe getting feedback on your assignment, maybe just feeling overwhelmed, it could be a voice. But think about this man who said, I want to make a decision for myself. Your own journey. I'm not sure where you are and how it feels in your journey of summiting your Kilimanjaro. Maybe it's very cold, but you need to keep walking slowly to avoid hypothermia. Maybe you just need to stay in the same camp another night. What will this mean to you? We also need to think about what you are hearing, as I mentioned earlier on. Are you hearing your team members' voices? Are you hearing their voices or your own voice? Is it also this voice from this summit or maybe from your previous summit experience or even hiking? Because as you are in your first year, how you started your primary sort of impact on you, how you started your grade eight, how you passed your grade 12 have got a voice, but can you allow your first year voice to talk to you? your first year voice and your experiences of UNISA? Is it the voice of your sub A when you were very overwhelmed and you didn't know how to write so overwhelming that you hear it now? There could be fears. Summiting Kilimanjaro provokes fears and feelings of inadequacy. There are a lot of stories that we also hear from Kilimanjaro experiences. Some people die, some people don't make it. Those are also fears that we could also be struggling with. But think about how these are affecting you. Maybe your own fears as well, but also think about what do you need? What do you need now? Do you need a rope so that other people can hold you and, and just guide you as you are holding into the rope? Do you want others to hold your hand? Do you want others to confront your fears with you? Do you want to tell yourself it is over? You are not cut out for university? Do you want to accept the message you think you are hearing? I'm not sure if, if it's the message of you can do it or you cannot do it, but what is that message? And are you ready to accept the message? In conclusion, I want you to think about this metaphor of summiting my Kilimanjaro and ask yourself, can you relate to this metaphor? Can you relate this metaphor of the summit to your own journey? Which part you also want to embrace so that it can be your own? You need to take time to reflect on why are you summiting? It needs to be very personal. It needs to be internalized. Can that reason keep you focused on this journey? Wusi, would you take over from here? 
Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. And it's quite important that we um, as students and we take time to um, uh, look at the reasons why you join UNISA because when we are motivating you, we are just actually doing that and saying, go back to your original idea. Why do you want to study and where is the studying taking you? But um, now I just want to share some few things that we want you to be aware of the support that we have at UNISA as um, as counseling so that you can able to manage your, your studies at UNISA and we are able to deal with different challenges that you may um, experience and those challenges may affect your, um, your, your study progress at UNISA and also preparing you for career opportunities, graduateness, employability, and planning and managing your career development and choosing a qualification that will prepare for you. So I want to share a, a little bit about this so that you understand the support that we actually offer to you to manage your studies. We know from experience and from also talking to from our own experience as UNISA students before, and also now as we at UNISA, that some few things affect not only your, your motivation and not motivated enough to continue the studies, but some extra, some also personal things that affect you. Like you have personal issues that offer, that challenges you to continue the studies that make you to make a decision. For example, let's say you lost a breadwinner, you're a breadwinner, and then you lost, um, um, uh, uh, maybe you're depending on someone else to provide things for you. You lost your father, you lost your mother, you lost your uncle, and, and then that affects the way you continue to study. It could be you also lost an, an as fast and anything else that, that, that you lost. That would be a personal uh, problem. Maybe if you are you're married, you're going through a divorce, is affecting your studies. Maybe you're going through a breakup. You know, you were in love with this uh, beautiful woman or this beautiful, uh, handsome man. And this handsome man, this beautiful woman decided they have enough of you. And they're telling you, huh, no, let's, let's call quits. And, and then now you're focusing, all your attention is focusing on these breakups and then you're not putting more effort on your studies and it affects you. Some people have suicide, suicidal thoughts. You know, you might be going through the thing that, hey, I'm not worth, it's not worth enough. I was just really, I was just um, re, uh, watching on Netflix recently um, a movie, a, a dream seller. And this guy was about to commit suicide and he met this other one and said, okay, instead of you putting a full stop, I want to sell to you a comma. Instead of putting a full stop, put a comma and do something else and see what will happen. It could be depression. It could be a traumatic uh, experience either from your family or from something that has happened. It could be a suffering from the anxiety or their personality disorder, or borderline disorder, or maybe domestic violence that is going on in your heart. It could be simple as parenting. You have kids. You come back from work. There's a husband you need to, you need to take care of, of, of him. There are kids that you need to take care of, of, of them. And, 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 and by nine o'clock, you're tired. You want to draw yourself to bed. And in the morning, you do exactly the same, the same thing. Now, what we're saying about these things, for them, personal issues, please contact us. We have seen people dropping out, people not completing their studies, people saying, I have this problem. And, and, and they're not doing anything about it, okay? So we are here as DCC team to, 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 to help you, to assist you. The second one will be educational difficulties, okay? We have some people that, for example, talking about uh, getting cum laude, but you need a kind of a discipline, study skills that you need to know how to study. You need to manage your time, okay? We have workshops. We, we are here in your disposal to be able to assist you if you don't know and find the best fit for you. And we're saying, okay, this is the best thing I can do or we, you can do for yourself because not one size fits all. 
in. We cannot go and saying, okay, this has been done and therefore it fits you. We're looking at it's, 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 it's personal. We're looking at you, we're looking at your experience saying, this could work for you after we work uh, with you. Then we have employability, we then we have workshops. We have after the skills workshop, exam preparation workshops where we share tips of how to prepare for your online exams and, and all the stuff. But the one I want to touch on will be the employability workshop, okay? Will be the employability workshop that we do. We, 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 we are sometimes interview students. We ask students to, to, to interview. For example, in our directorate, we have um, student mentors. Now we require for, uh, to, for them to send CVs and we call them for uh, interviews. Okay. Or someone else will say to me, please, can you assist me? I have an interview at ABCD. Can you can you assist with me? Okay. So what we do in our directorate, we are here to help you with how to write a, a CV. Remember, a CV is just um, it, it's, it's there to open doors for you for interviews. Okay. It's selling you to the next person. And we look at the CVs, when we receive CVs, I was just working on one CV um, recently, and I said, too many things are missing in this CV. I, I personally I knew the person, and I knew certain things were missing. And the person said, I have, um, I have um, a security, it's working in the security uh, industry. And then I said, where is your professional number? It's not there. Where is this? It's not, it's not there. So things that are left out and the way the CV is crafted, and therefore it does not even lend you that CV that you send it to, things that I've been sending 100 CVs and, and I'm not being called for interviews because your CV is badly constructed sometimes. Um, I mean, we, we, we can go to the good luck. But that's why we are here to assist you. So use our directorate to, to, to help you. Use other if you get an interview, don't just we have interviewed people, don't just go for an interview. Call us and saying, Can you? Um, I want to have a mock interview because I have an interview in three and four days, whatever, in two weeks' time. Please, can you assist me so that you can able to build that confidence so that when you go to an interview, you are able to talk. I remember I did a mock interview with, with, with one student. Okay, sitting down there and this was online. And the first thing that we said in the first um, um, uh, session that we had, that if we were hiring a um, 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 company, we were not going to hire you. Your confidence was down. We, we couldn't hear you sometimes. There were a lot of other things. But then you have to work on her confidence. And she went for the, for the after that, after the, that time, for time, she was much better. And she went for an um, interview. She came back and said, okay, I got a job. I said, okay, that's what we do. So um, talk to us, then we'll help you with these, with those things, um, questions that you might face in interviews and how to answer them and all stuff. Then also have, we have support services at Shinisa different support services. Some people will send an email uh, to this one, they do not get an answer. Maybe they send an email there, they're going to answer that, that you like. Remember, because we work at Tunisia, we also know where to send to, to, to source for information or to advise if we need to advise. So if you are stuck, talk to us. Okay, talk to us and saying, hey, I have, um, my computer is not working. And we're saying, oh, okay, Mr. Dao, the student is saying, computer is not working because of A, B, C, D. Please can you attend to that? Please can you see that? And Mr. Dao said, okay, I'll be glad. Let me help. But if you sit there with a problem alone and, and, and you are stuck, then we don't know. And we can't I, I help you either. Okay. Some Right now, there's a problem about um, the website. And maybe you are trying, they said, I know this thing, it should be working like this. This is how it should be doing, but it's not doing what it should be doing. Okay, maybe there's a problem with UNISA, but you need to get information from us and we'll tell you, okay, don't worry, you have to do A, B, C, D, because this is this is the problem that you are facing uh, in um, in our in the website on the technology things, and we can assist you. Those are, but talk to us, and then we'll know uh, we might know, not every time might not solve your problem, but you might advise you properly and saying, maybe if you go there, or maybe if you connect that person, we'll then get, a, get an answer. So so, um, so what I'm trying to say to you as we are motivating you to start a study is that also, don't sit there 
and think you are the only one and no one can help you. Okay, um, read out. There will be our email at the end. This is our email there, the email address. Please reach us to us. This is our email address. Write to us. Um, I think our colleagues will put it on the chat so that you know. If you need a personal appointment, we have professionals. Okay, book a session with us. There's also a link where you can book a session with a, a student counselor um, that can then um, help you. And then the other, the other resources are there for you to assist you. So we are just working close to you, but we are not interfering with you. Okay, we're working straight. Same gene with you. You are running the, com the same comrade with the comrade marathon, but you're not leaving you behind. And we will not, we will see there's a problem, but we won't really talk to you unless you tell us that I need water. For example, if you run the comrade marathon, those who are running, you can see there are stations that are put there for water, for drinks, and for whatever. But only you can just while we are running, stretch your hand, and then the people will know that you need water, you need cold drink, you need this so that you can get energy. Though we are those people. We are at the, at the side waiting for you to stretch up your hand and we'll then come back and assist you and help you with whatever you need. I thank you. Thank you, Program Director. Oh, I think. Thank you so much, Mr. Penyani. Thank you to our colleagues at the DCCD. Uh, yes, thank you so much. I mean, please give them a round of applause <laughs> uh, for sharing uh, sharing all the resources that you know UNISA is providing. I think because we are lacking behind. Um, I don't know if there are people who want to actually post questions. Uh, please post them in the chat, or maybe you can just, let me just check uh, if we have any questions, if there are hands that are raised. Students, please pose your questions, or maybe you can just raise your hand if you have a question. Going once. <laughs> going twice. Okay, I don't see any hands. Colleagues, can you see any hands? I don't see any hands. Oh, okay. Yes, Boy Dumelo. Boy Dumelo, you can just unmute and maybe pose a question before we close because we are 10 minutes uh, behind, but maybe, you know, you need an answer immediately. And uh, please pose your question, Boy Dumelo, Patricia. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Afternoon, welcome. Uh, not much of a question, just a, um, a compliment, actually, okay. um, with regards to uh, the this meeting that you held. Um, I'd just like to say thank you. I found it very informative. And to the lady, I think it's Kanisha, yes. um, also a person living with a chronic illness right now. And um, literally, I'm 37 years old, and through all these years, I've been in and out of hospital, and now... At this age, I have now uh, taken on this journey of studying. And um, I find what everybody has said to be quite inspirational. And um, going forward, this information is, is really, it's really relevant. And I, I just want to say thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Patricia. Um, this is really useful. I don't know if Kanisha wants to actually respond. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the for the encouraging words and sharing Thanks. your experience. Thank you so yeah. much and being vulnerable <laughs> and sharing in the platform. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia, and all the best in your studies. In fact, to everyone who's uh, present today, uh, all the best with your studies. Really, we really hope that this live broadcast actually you know, changes your mindset and make you aware what UNISA is providing to assist you in your academic journey. And uh, we really want everyone to actually pass their first year because as uh, all uh, my panel members have shared, how whatever cha whatever challenge they actually encountered, they were able to overcome. And now they are doing their honours and uh, some are even doing their last year. So we want everyone who's here to be that person. Um, maybe. In 
Okay, I don't think we have questions, but I think there's something on the chat. Um, okay, there's a question from Umpile. Okay, so Umpile is saying for someone who's struggling to juggle the pressure of schoolwork, family, and physical health, what advice would you give to someone? I often find myself in a position where I focus more on my schoolwork and forgetting about family time or my physical health. Um, maybe I should give it to our counselors. How so Umpile is asking for advice on how um they how can they focus on their schoolwork and not a, actually forget about their family time and they, their physical health. Uh, please, I'll give you a stage to our counselors. Thank you, so there. Yes, okay. Um, uh, thank you, and Kozo, and thank you for the question. Um, I'm just checking in uh, for Smusi. Uh, would you mind um, taking the question from from our side? Um, yes, um, I was just thinking that um, I'm reading that um, um, question. There's a lot of it we don't know from from her. Okay. My advice is to make a booking with the counsellor because the counsellor of Apple is saying, OK, let's look at how much you spend on schoolwork, how much you spend with family, how much you spend doing physical health or looking at your health. So they will look at the holistic. So they also look at the things that are affecting you, maybe that, um, you know, uh, um, um, affecting your life and your input or contribution to the family and to the schoolwork. We also coming from different um, uh, cultural backgrounds that also have um, uh, impact the way we do things. Certain things are expected, you know, that you do certain A, A, B, C, D. If you don't, for example, if you go, don't go. If you are married, for example, you don't go to the in-laws. If there is a there is a funeral, then it becomes a whole big problem. So my advice is book a session with the counselor and then discuss this issue. And the counselor will up saying, okay, let's let's look at these things. Let's look at it separately and then and see how the how best you can um uh, balance it because it's a question of balancing um your 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 family life, your school life, and your personal life. So those things need balance. So how can you strike that balance? And and that balance could it work for you um or, or something like that. So please, um, I said, uh, please, um, um, and let's can we share the the link uh, to um, if they want to book a, a session, um, so they can able to book a session and someone else can assist you. So that's the only advice. I cannot give a general because there are a few things that I don't know, and that I will need to go back and understand uh, on peel and well before then we we continue. Thank you. Mm. Thank you so much, Mr. Penyane. I think yeah, it's important. We all need uh, to balance our family life, our health. I think it's very important. Uh, and also just to say to Umpil and everyone who's joining that the session is free. So please make time and book a session. Uh, the details have been shared by my colleagues. OK, uh, I think I'm going to close the uh, Zamo, OK, OK. Uh, I'm going to take your last question, but before I do that, there's also Tehofato Fortunate who says, how does one determine which postgrad qualification is al aligned with their undergraduate qualification? Um, Tehofato has that question. And then uh, if my colleagues can just respond in the chat, and then Zamawak, I'm just going to give you the last person uh, uh, to uh, because now we are over time. So Samoa can please go first and then I'm just gonna close the question and answer. And then we're gonna I'm gonna hand over to uh, Ms. Feba, uh, Ms. Zianda Febanamkila, who's going to be doing the closing for us. Zamoa can please pose your question uh, so that uh, uh, please unmute your mic. Okay, yes, okay. Yes, Thank go you. for it. Uh -huh. Um, I just I just wanted to like show some appreciation uh, with what uh, Yudisa is doing uh, because 
uh, there are a lot of things that uh, we are actually going through as students, right? And uh, some of us are actually working, maybe like some of us are actually working two jobs and uh, are studying as well. And we also have uh, families that we actually need uh, to take care of. And uh, I actually just wanted to say that uh, I'm going to be actually be one of those who are actually going to be booking a session so that uh, I can have some uh, uh, counseling done for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So at the moment, I'm not going to try and share uh, a lot of details, but uh, I am going to be booking a session. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to it because um, I've never actually uh, had someone like uh, uh, telling me about uh, this COVID and that the is actually providing. So yeah, yeah. Thank you very much to you, Nisa. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I just wanted to show some appreciation. Thank you very much. Huh? Thank you so much, Zamawaka, for the kind words. And maybe we can give uh, uh, a round of applause for our counsellors. We know that they're doing the, the job that they like, but they're doing a great job. They're providing a great service. Please give them a round of applause to our counsellors, Ms. Lisa Dazel, uh, Mr. Wusmuzi Penyane, and uh, Dr. Kodisang Chipiwa. Uh, may we please give them a round of applause. We know that the also other colleagues, but the directorate, what the directorate is doing. I thank you so much, colleagues. We really, I really, really, truly appreciate what you're doing uh, for UNISA as a whole, the UNISA community, not only our students, but um, the UNISA community. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you, uh, uh, students, for joining us today. I'm just going to hand over to Zianda. Zianda, are you ready? Uh, may you please do the closing for us? And we are really yes, apologize for taking uh, so much of your time because we were supposed to end at 12 but thank you for staying thank you so much um i'm not going to come back so i'm just going to give the floor to uh uh to zianda and i just want to say thank you maybe i'll just say thank you to all the sru team who's responding and actually assisting us and all uh mr Dao and also Mr. Goffrey, who are also helping us uh, on the, te the technical team, and also our uh, wonderful uh, panel members, and also our colleagues uh, at uh, DCCD. Thank you so much. And of course, our special guest, our, uh, our students. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, colleagues. And thank you so much, students, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much, Ms. Sulu. Can we give a round of applause, please, for our program director? Um, and also our guests, our students, and a round of applause for you students who have taken this journey um, to embark in, on your career at UNISA. Mm -hmm. UNISA is the largest open distance e-learning in Africa, and therefore you have taken quite a huge step to be part of this magnificent university as it celebrates its 150 years. So from my side, I am here to um, do the closing, but I thought it would be fitting for such a beautiful um, broadcast to share with you a poem that has um, kept me motivated as I climbed my own Kilimanjaro during my um, undergrad studies. This is a poem by Marianne Wolf Williamson, um, and it's in the book, A Return to Love. And I'll just read it. I'll promise I won't take more of your time. It says, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light and not our darkness that most frighten us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, to be gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We are born to manifest the glory of God within, within us. And it's not in just some of us, it is in everyone. And as, we, and as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberate others. So in times of doubt during your first year journey, ask yourself, who are you not to succeed in this journey? Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time and congratulations.
Thank you.